right, 1984 is a year known for historical revisionism, the attempts of a small town preacher to prevent Kevin Bacon from expressing his creativity through dance, <laughs> and the revelation that feeding cute, adorable creatures too late in the evening could turn them into homicidal gremlins. These are all relevant themes to my story. Also of note, but to a lesser degree, I, was, I turned four, the A-team was in its sophomore season on television, and I had gotten in my head that for Christmas that year, Santa Claus was going to be bringing me a toddler-sized A-team van to drive around in to reward me for my good behavior. But Christmas that year was a treacherous time. I was faced with not one, but two grandmothers and an arsenal of sweets and cookies. And they would lure me away from my normally angelic behavior with taunts like, here, Jeffrey, try this cookie. No, Jeffrey, my cookies are so much better. And I had, uh, I felt a little enticed, and dare I say it, entrapped, because I ate all the cookies that those mothers gave me. And it's possible that the sugar affected my behavior. I might have thrown a stocking or two at my sisters, and several of the, tr of the tree ornaments didn't make it through the night. And there was a rumor that somebody fed the dog an obscene amount of eggnog. But what eventually happened is that the phone rang, and it was Santa Claus, and he was calling for me, because apparently he'd learned that I'd been misbehaving, and he threatened that if I continued to misbehave, he'd be forced to label me naughty, and then he'd issue me a brick for Christmas. So I said to him with a clarity I have never felt since, you, sir, are not Santa Claus. You're a poo-poo head. <laughs> and then the next sound was of the phone slamming against the hook because I hung up on Santa Claus and then my sister doing her best Keanu Reeves impression when she went, whoa. And then my mother screamed even louder, Jeffrey Allen Baker. And she said all three of my names so I knew I was in a lot of trouble. And off to bed I went. Now, Christmas mornings in my household followed a particular procedure. My sisters would wake up before dawn, they'd wander into my room, wake me up, and then force me to go wake up our parents and convince them to let us open presents. We'd all go out into the living room and there'd be three equal piles beneath the tree. And there had to be equal piles, because if there weren't, my middle sister, who learned arithmetic from counting the amount of presents she received, would flip out. But this morning, there were only two piles. There was also a giant refrigerator-sized box with the label, To Jeffrey from Santa. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the size of a refrigerator, I've included an image with banana for scale. <laughs> so, that morning, I stared at this giant refrigerator-sized box, and I thought to myself that, sure, this was the size of box that Dreams and toddler size 18 vans came in. So I immediately, I started digging into it. I tore away at the newspaper, I tore away at all the crumpled, uh, the crumpled bits of plastic that they used to pack it up. And eventually, after tipping my body all the way over the edge and letting my pale white Florida butt stick up into the sky without any shame, I reached the bottom, and I found a brick. <laughs> now, I don't actually have any photographs of this moment because they've been lost over the years to hurricanes, so I've included some reenactment photos just to give you a sense of what actually transpires. My sisters would tell you that I reacted fairly poorly in this moment. And my sister texted me a week or so ago, and she said, uh, what she doesn't say in this text message actually, is that I, I didn't go to the room alone. I actually brought the brick with me because eventually, I learned to embrace the brick, okay? Because it was Christmas morning, I was, in my room, I was in my room, I was crying the way that children cry, so like loud and snotty, and it occurred to me that nobody was coming to console me, and so it was just me and the brick. So I got it in my mind that I'd be a little bit like Kevin Bacon to John Lithgow and I'd rebel a little bit. Because outside, kids were playing with new bikes and puppies and He-Man action figures, and I had a brick, but not just any brick. Because I had Brick E. House, because yes, I gave him a name, and then I gave him a history. You see, Brick was from Detroit. Brick loved the Star Wars franchise and he loved Jaws. And he worked for a little while in the Midwest as an encyclopedia salesman, and he brought funk and wagnalls to all the boys and girls across America. He was an avid reader and an outdoorsman, and together we'd go on long hikes, and we'd play hide and seek, and we did our lunch in the outdoor air. Now, when we weren't doing this, we were collecting Star Wars memorabilia, and we were reenacting scenes from Empire Strikes Back. And even though we didn't have a toddler-sized A team van to drive around in, we still made plans, we still righted wrongs, and we still made sure to protect those who couldn't protect themselves. Now, Brick was also really good about letting me talk. When you're the youngest of three and you have two older, horrible, much ruder sisters, it's very difficult to get a word in edgewise. And he was very supportive. He was always there if I ever had a nightmare, or if a neighborhood bully ever teased me for like having a Brick for an imaginary friend. But eventually, Brick died. It was a very cold January day with winds out of the east, and all of that is not really true. My sisters might have been playing keep away with him, or I was just being really careless. What matters is that Brick was my first character and he was my first story, but he wouldn't be my last. 
In third grade, I wrote a novel with my classmates about a murderous third grade teacher and the students she tortured. <laughs> and then in sixth grade, I wooed my first girlfriend with Twilight Zone scripts I wrote until the semester ended and we couldn't handle the long distance relationship. In college, I published my first story about bad meat and toll booth operation, and this inspired me to get an MFA. And now I'm here teaching English and creative writing, and I write a blog that like six whole people read, and I've been stalled in the novel for a couple years. But I love, I love telling stories, it's in my blood, and Brick's my favorite one to tell. Thank you.